this is our drone platform, which is a DJI Matrix 600 Pro aircraft mounted with a DJI Ronin MX gimbal. On the gimbal is our sensor computer pack, which has a LiDAR, a camera, and an inertial sensor inside the box. There is a computer to process the sensor data in real time. The gimbal is very important here because it keeps the sensors level or points them in the flight direction for obstacle detection. Thanks for watching my channel. Today, let's talk about a topic called pass planning. Pass planning is about computing passes that are clear and free, meaning that they don't collide with any objects. And these passes lead the robot to the goal. A fundamental thing here is to know where the objects are, of course. That's from the sensors on board the robot that can see the surroundings, for example, lidars and sonars. A long time ago, in the early history of robot navigation, people used these artificial potential field based approaches to guide the robots. They treated the objects as having some virtual forces pushing the robot away. Very simple approaches and worked quite amazingly. But there is no guarantee in finding the passes with these methods. Today, the most popular approaches are random sampling based approaches that connect these randomly generated particles to form the passes. It usually takes some time for the computer to select the random samples and use them to compute the passes. We human beings have an ultimate desire to go faster and faster, to push the limit of speed in this physical space, from running to horseback riding to motorized vehicles. Being able to move faster is deeply embedded in our human nature. And there's another reason to fly faster, the energy consumption. Cars can stop in the middle of the driving, and whenever they stop, they don't consume energy to stay there. But aircraft is different. It needs energy to stay in the air. There is limited fuel or battery on the aircraft. So the faster you can fly, the more you can do. On this journey of constantly trying to go faster, we reached a bottleneck with these existing past planning approaches. We're looking for something that can sink further and make a decision faster. So, how about using a prior map to plan the passes ahead of time? We can build a 3D map of the area that we would like to navigate, and we can plan these passes even without going out of the office. We first generate this long pass that connects the start point to the goal point. Then we add these short alternate passes that come out of the long pass. Then another layer to go even further away from the long pass. We can do this layer after layer. During navigation, if the robot encounters an obstacle, it picks one of the alternate passes to avoid it. And it can pick another alternate pass to avoid a second obstacle. There are multiple layers of alternate passes to choose. After a few months of development work, the first field test was on an unused industrial site. We laid out a few obstacles on the site. There was an instant canopy, a tree, and some wires. The flight test was successful. The second fuel test was in an orchard. After a few hundred meters of flying, the drone started its landing sequence. We had a tractor left in the field, with its front loader lifted up, and the drone avoided it. Now we got some achievements and we wanted to move further to give ourselves a challenge. We wanted to fly in a dense forest at a very fast speed. Then we realized that we are constrained by this approach. The number of alternate passes grows exponentially with respect to the number of layers. In the end, it may take days to generate these passes. Also, we found the way that the passes are organized limits the number of obstacles that the robot can possibly avoid. At this point, we started to work out a different approach. Instead of planning a single pass connecting the start to the go, we plan multiple alternate passes, which we call alternate lanes. Then we add some short pass segments for the robot to transit from one lane to another. 
the robot can switch from one lane to any other lane to avoid the obstacles. On the test day, we arranged two rounds. In the first round, there was no obstacle added to the field. The drone followed basically a single lane from the start to the end. In the second round, we installed several obstacles and let the drone avoid them. This was a flight test that the multiple Orton lanes became usable. On this one-year journey of trying to fly faster, we constantly questioned ourselves. And now we understand. The key insight that can make the robot to the next level of speed is to think further and think faster. We reiterate this concept when we open the window to the next approach or the next project. It has an everlasting journey, and we have just barely started.